One of the most bizarre aspects of Irish politics is the engagement that elected representatives often have with the uh, passport service. It's not something I'm terribly comfortable with, I have to say, and I should make it clear that people shouldn't have to contact their TDs in order to get their passport on time. In my experience, Cahirlach, those who do get in touch with me with passport inquiries generally do so out of desperation. And their stories in recent days and weeks have been disappointing, to put it mildly. They have recounted their engagement with a system that can only be described as dysfunctional over the past number of months. In April, um, Minister Coveney told the House that the then backlog of 89,000 applications would be cleared by the end of June. A fortnight after that deadline had passed, the backlog had actually grown to 95,000. As of late September, the backlog had increased to 130,000. I hope the Minister of State will be able to provide us with up-to-date figures this evening. And I'm sure that the staff and the passport office have been working exceptionally hard through all of this, but there is a serious system failure that has led to this point. It seems, I have to say, incredible that the department claimed that over one in five applications um, are incomplete or require further information. Um, and I want to tell the Minister and put on the record of the House my experience of one of my constituents. This gentleman and his wife were due to travel to Medjugorje yesterday. They were going for their own personal um, pilgrimage. They submitted their passport applications on the 15th of September. In his wife's case, it was a simple renewal. She received an estimated issue date of the 14th of October. Because his um, passport had expired 11 years ago, which will tell you how unique this trip was, his was treated as a new application and he was told that his passport wouldn't issue until the 23rd of November. So he contacted me pleading that something be done. On the 1st of October, I sent an urgent passport query attaching his flight details um, and I didn't receive any response at all. Following numerous attempts, and I mean numerous attempts, to call the passport phone line, I resent the urgent passport query on the 13th of October. Again, no response. On the 15th of October, I called, uh, contacted the minister's office, and I have to say a very helpful um, official undertook to contact the passport office on behalf of this man. And only then did I receive an email acknowledgement, um, in which actually just told me and the applicant just to monitor their phone and emails. Both myself and my constituency SA tried numerous times again to contact the passport office on this, uh, on this case. And because we couldn't on the 19th of October, um, before this, uh, the day before this couple's um, trip, we again contacted the minister's office. Um, but on this occasion, we were referred back to the public line, which we hadn't been able to get through to up until that point. My essay eventually got through to the public line at 4.25 the day before their flights, but the person who answered wouldn't provide any information and, in fact, terminated the call. The man did not get his passport in time. In fact, his wife, who had been provided with an estimated issue date of the 14th of October, didn't receive her passport either. They still haven't actually received their passports. And it's very hard, Cahirlock, just to describe the upset that this ordeal has caused um, this particular couple without detailing their very personal reasons for wanting to travel to Medjugorje. I can only say that their upset and hurt is very, very real and will be long-standing. I want to hear this evening the Minister's proposal to ensure that no other family will have to go through such an ordeal in the coming days and weeks. Thank you, Deputy. On Tara. Chakta. Um, I, I, I just to say, I, you know, I empathise with that family situation. It's very difficult and um, very difficult case. But uh, I just give this response on behalf of Mr. Coveney. The deputy will be aware that the operations of the passport service were severely disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. As were many government services, emergency passport services were maintained during the pandemic, which required staff to be on site to process and issue passports. On that basis, and taking into account of COVID protocols in place at the time, 67,000 passport books and cards were issued between January and May of this year. Since May of this year, over 400,000 passports and passport cards have been issued, meaning that in total almost half a million passports and cards have been issued to date in 2021. Almost 45% of passports are simple online adult renewals issue with, within one business day, with more complex applications take a little bit longer. 
As regards turnaround times, the current passport processing times provided all required documentation is provided uh, are in order are 10 working days for simple adult renewals, 15 working days for complex renewals, 40 working days for first-time applications on passports online, and eight weeks for an on-post mail-in Passport Express service. The passport service is currently experiencing a high demand for first-time passports. Of the 140,000 applications currently on hand, over 65,000, or 45 per cent, are first-time applications. These first-time applications do take longer to process than a renewal application. In order to protect the integrity of the Irish passport, first-time applications require careful processing to validate and identify the applicant and their entitlement to Irish citizenship for the first time. Additionally, in the case of children, the consent of guardians must be validated. In line with the continued scaling up of services, the Passport Office in Mount Street, Dublin 2, opened its urgent uh, appointment service for the renewal of passports on the 27th of September 2021. This service is available to people who require passport renewal at short notice and opt for the fee-based service to do so. To avail of this service, members of the public can visit the website of the Department of Foreign Affairs. The urgent appointment service ensures that for those who unexpectedly require an urgent turnaround or a passport renewal, an option is available that is transparent, predictable and clear. It means that an, an applicant can book and pay for their appointment, safe in the knowledge that they will have their passport within a day or a few days. Turning to staffing, the Department of Foreign Affairs has assigned 126 officers to the passport service to date in 2021. In addition, 50 officers were internally reassigned to the passport service during the period of peak demand in the summer. The requirement for social distancing in the workplace continues to have a significant impact on the capacity of the passport service to operate at normal levels. The department is currently focused on recruiting additional staffing to meet expected demand for passports in 2022 and ensuring adequate staff staffing levels in the passport service. This work takes account of evolving requirements related to COVID restrictions and includes engagement with the public appointment service and a number of internal HR processes. Budget 2022 included an investment of an, addition ten, an additional €10 million Euro in passport services in response to the increasing demand for passports both at home and abroad. In closing, I would urge citizens to check their passports well in advance of any planned travel in order to ensure that they apply for a passport in plenty of time. The passport online service continues to be the fastest and most efficient channel for passport applications. Thank you, Cahir Lock. Um, I'm disappointed, I have to say, that Minister Coveney isn't, um, isn't here. I thank um, the Minister of State for his response, but the response isn't actually even up to date. Um, Minister, I'm dealing with a family who are due to travel next Thursday. They've been told that the, their baby um, um, won't be issued their passport in time, even though it will have been in the system eight weeks. My office has actually been told today by the department, by this special helpline that has been um, set up, that the current time frame is actually 10 weeks. And I have to say, Minister, and I, I've been listening to the excuses around COVID since back in April when the Minister gave that commitment in relation to the then backlog, this isn't happening anywhere else in the world. Anywhere else in the Western world that I'm aware of, and I checked with former colleagues in the European Parliament, there is no other European state that is suffering, dealing with this type of backlog. It is unfathomable to most of the colleagues who I was talking about that people would have to contact their elected representative to find out when their passport is going to I issue. Um, I will say, Minister, in respect of the information that Minister Coveney sent to us during the day in relation to an Oireachtas helpline, that helpline will be absolutely um, pointless if cases like these can't be addressed. If the responses to queries um, are simply just a rehashing of information that's already contained on the website, then it will actually be a waste of resources and will only add to the frustration that people um, are going through. The purpose of such a line must be to assist the department in receiving details of urgent cases and then being able to act uh, accor accordingly. Um, I note in your response that, you mentioned, that the minister mentioned that during the summer period they had additional staff 
reassigned to the department. I would ask you to tell Minister Coveney to reassign them again, bring them back into the passport office and clear off this because these are really tragic human stories. It might sound benign, you're talking about in some cases holidays, but there's reasons behind all of this and people should be able to expect a reasonable service when they're, which they're paying for in the terms of their passport delivery. So I'd ask you to bring that message as forcefully as you can to Minister Coveney. Thank you again. Thank you, Deputy. The Passport Service continually examines how to improve processing times, including examining the process around the verification and processing of the support, uh, supporting documentation for first-time applicants and addressing in delays that have been experienced by customers as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the high demand seen in recent months as international travel resumed. There has also been an ongoing process of reform within the Passport Service since 2016. Enhancements over the past number of years mean that Passport Online can now be accessed for the first time applicants, both children and adults in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Great Britain, Europe, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and USA. All Irish citizens, including children, can use the online system and renew their passports from anywhere in the world. The Irish passport is one of the most secure in the world and one of the most effective in terms of granting our citizens visa-free access to most countries in the world. Recent reforms have improved uh, fraud detection capacity following the introduction of new facial recognition technology, which improves the efficiency and integrity of the passport system. In addition, the Irish passport card has recently been upgraded with a seal crypt barcode strip on the back of the card. The next major element of reform of the programme is to replace the core technology underpinning the passport service. The current system was launched in 2004 and will be replaced by a more modern integrated system. Detailed design and... I, 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 Detailed design and implementation will begin in the coming months, expected to operation. Just in... in, in, in con Mr. Continue without interruption. Facial recognition. I'm talking about families who are waiting for their passports. No, here, look, that is actually outrageous. It's outrageous. A, 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 a deputy is raising genuine questions and he's been answered a question that he didn't ask. Look, deputy, deputy, if you allow me to... If you don't allow the Minister to answer, I'll move on and there'll be no answer. If you just allow me to conclude, uh, I know the response I've given, including remarks, doesn't give you the specific answer that you require. And, and certainly I will take these back to, to the Minister and the Department. I think you made your case very well uh, on behalf of the, the applicants. And it is uh, deeply upsetting on families when they're making travel arrangements, they're making plans. Uh, I did say in the opening remarks, you know, it's really important that uh, uh, people... Uh, make their plans early, make sure that their passports are, are, are in date. Uh, in, in relation to the specific case, um, those backlogs are there, and I do think it's vitally important that they're cleared. I think the staffing issue, uh, you know, we will take that back as well. I think it's vitally important that all resources are put in place to ensure that members of the public have access to their passports in the time that's been uh, uh, directed uh, and set out uh, in the recommendations, but uh, I do take on board the point that you're making in relation to this specific case. Thank you. Thank you.